One of the vexing problems of medical ethics is why do some doctors do evil things? Why do some doctors participate in torture? Why do some doctors serve as officers in concentration camps? Why do some doctors participate in brainwashing? And Robert Lifton's work has offered us some insights into why people behave in that way and what we might do about it to see if we can stop it from happening in the future. I'm really pleased and honored to receive this award and I'm happy that I can be among you even if from a, a distance. My father had an influence on my leaning toward medicine because at the end of World War II he had been in the medical corps and was fascinated by what he was exposed to and conveyed things to me. At New York Medical College, I not only got a traditional medical education, but I felt encouraged to go my own way, to choose a path and perhaps combine different areas, not stick to the straight and narrow. And that was an important influence on me. Being sent to Japan as a very young man changed my life. I had completed my military service and my wife and I had arranged for me to be discharged in Japan so that we could take a world trip. And our second stop was Hong Kong where I had a chance to interview people who had come out of China and had been subjected to thought reform or what's popularly called brainwashing. And that concern with totalism or extremism became a leitmotif of my life and my career. The next study that I did was interviewing people in Hiroshima about their experience with the atomic bomb. There was a special intensity of uh, a Japanese survivor of Hiroshima. The next study I did was in the early 70s and that had to do with Vietnam veterans. By interviewing anti-war veterans, I could learn a lot about what I came to call an atrocity-producing situation. Uh, Vietnam taught me a great deal and was applicable all too much to subsequent American wars, including those in Iraq and Afghanistan. The next study that I did was a study of Nazi doctors. That was perhaps the most painful of studies that I did. It was a lesson, among other things, in how people in my own profession could take the lead in many ways. Dr. Lifton exemplifies the concept of the public intellectual. Scholars who pay attention to communicating their scholarship to the public at large. In Dr. Lifton's case, either through his books, through his appearances in documentary films, in being questioned in public forum and being on television. All important ways of conveying important ideas to the public at large in a way they can understand, they can appreciate, and in a way of influencing public policy. New York Medical College is honored to have our most famous living graduate here to receive the William Cullen Bryan Award for Extraordinary Lifetime Achievement.